Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guest is second time on the show, Renee Mass. Uh, Renee, give people a quick introduction to yourself and then we'll jump back into it. I wonder if I should have wrote down what at our, uh, what episode you were on before if they wanted to go back. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, maybe I'll put it in. I'll put it in the show notes so people can track it down that way. Anyway, go ahead. Glenn, it's always talk. It's always a pleasure talking with you. I think you're you're a really good guy, and this this is quite a quite a show. And you, you give a lot of value. I think that's very important. So uh, a bit about myself. I'm I'm uh, born and raised in, in Toronto. I live in Kingston. I do my business in Kingston mostly, and uh, I'm an investor. But I also, I'm a realtor, I'm a business owner, we do renovations constantly, I'm a coach, I help people out, and I work with JV Partners. So it's, it's, I've got the whole package on, on the investing and real estate side. Awesome. What really sparked this conversation to get, get Renee back on the show? was a post he put on Facebook. As you guys are starting to see a common trend. I, I look at Facebook a lot. Whenever I see good stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring you on my show. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I'll give you the first part of the quote, and then we'll just run with this. If you like your kids, buy them RS RESPs. If you love your kids, buy them real estate. Tell me the story, Renee. What, what do we do here? <laughs> so I, was in, I was in Durham. I was in Durham REI. It was uh, a mortgage broker. Uh, Dion, uh, who, who mentioned this, and I found that really quite funny, and it, it caught people's attention. Yeah. So I, I used it, and I'm sure he uh, he's now I think he's now living in Barbados or. or oh, that sounds miserable. Yeah. Oh, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably too hot. But he's a good guy, so I like that quote. I, I took it took it from him, and I'm sure he, he'd be fine with that. And uh, I think that's that's very important because. I think there's certain things that aren't mentioned to the general public. And on one thing is, is the, the value of real estate. I mean, you know how it goes. Oh yeah. Thanks. Buy, buy real estate and wait. Right. And like, what yeah. is an RESP? That's the exact same thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the RESP, <laughs> it, it, there's benefits to it, but it yeah. may not be as, as powerful. Oh. We should say what an RESP is, just because yeah, yeah. I, I always do. <laughs> what is an RESP, Renee? <laughs> it's a registered education savings plan. So the idea behind it is that you're saving for your child's education. Yeah. And it's a Canadian thing. They have probably a different term for it in the, the U.S., a different Precisely. term everywhere else. But that's a Canadian term for, yeah. The government pitches in, I think, 20% of whatever you put in. Something I like that. So, so you can put in the, the life maximum lifetime amount is fifty thousand. You can put in, but generally you've got to contribute two thousand five hundred annually. And if you do so, they will match it. They'll they'll add twenty percent to it right away. So yeah. that's up to five hundred thousand per year. I mean, it sounds really good on paper. And then the maximum you can do per year. Uh, I believe is uh, seven thousand two hundred up to the age of of eighteen, but only every year they're only going to give you five hundred dollars. Yeah, and you can't put it all in one lump sum, right? It has to be right. like, each year. You have to continue going at it. And, and the idea behind it, they, I mean, it sounds really good. It's like you're going to put in two thousand five hundred, and they're going to give you twenty percent right away. So it's like you're you're making twenty percent on your money. Yep. At least plus an interest rate of whatever you're, what, depends what you've invested this RESP in because you could go into like whatever you wanted, the same sort of thing, mutual funds, stocks, bonds. So, so there, yeah, there's many ways of going about it. This is one strategy, although I find it weak. I find it, I mean, what's the cost of education nowadays for one year? If, you're, if, you're, if your child's going to first year university, how much do you need? I don't know. You're asking the wrong guy. What's it? Like, what's it up to now? Like five grand, ten grand? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 you know, schooling, pay for schooling, books, and accommodation. I think you need. Oh, with accommodation, you're going to be way up there. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to easily need. I'd say thirty thousand per year. Easily. Mid okay. Thirty thousand per year. I mean, that maybe they got a job and they can they can they can help up with that. But overall, yeah, twenty to thirty thousand. Easily yeah, per year. So after four years, you're talking easily hundred thousand. So you know, theoretically, 
if you were doing the RESP way, you could get there because, you know, it's, uh, you know, you're going to get interest on your interest, compound interest through this whole thing, 20% match right off the bat from the government. And, you know, you could get there if you max this thing out every... I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Yeah. I'm saying it's not going be the best idea. What are other options? Renee, what are, we, what are our other options? What else could we do? Early on, when I got started off, basically, I would basically buy a house, fix it up. And then rather than selling it, I would simply rent it out and then buy another house. So along the journey of doing that, I bought a house and I told myself, well, this one's, this one's for the child. And I, you may like this story. I think maybe we'll like, we'll like this story. Yeah. She was conceived in the house. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so this, you had this house beforehand or you were renting it or how did you have that? How, how did you conceive this property? <laughs> you just like knocked on the door like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go. We're going to do a house tour. We just don't need the realtor with us today. <laughs> I was looking at... <laughs> we, I was, I was, it was at about that time where I was like, uh, I bought this house uh, for five years and then I refinanced and then I bought another house with it and then left this one to rent it out. The, okay, per- yeah. the house that I purchased, I told myself, this one's for the child. She, yep. was, she was conceived in it and all that. Yeah. Yep. And then and then we we kept it. And then once again, we jumped ship, as you can say. We basically moved again and then just kept it as a rental. It's it's a it's a deep it's a duplex as well. Awesome. Okay. So in your case, you didn't have to re buy this thing from scratch for the child. You already had it. If you were doing this. Yep. for uh like from scratch like someone just listened to this podcast they're like this is a great idea i'm just having a kid i'm gonna go put this in um you may not even know this i might be just like making real pain in the ass questions <laughs> but <laughs> would you be able to put this in your resp can you buy real estate in an resp like you could like in an rrsp you can yeah so it's a good question uh, I, i'm i i like yeah. the rsp uh yeah and the rsps and all that you you can you can invest in real estate through registered funds. Yeah. Although there's one caveat that is very important. You cannot be the owner of the property. Mm. You can invest in it, but you can't be the owner of the property. That's be- the reason is, is because it's all government regulations. Right. So typically what people do when I when they when they lend me their RSPs or RESPs for one way or another, I've used a strategy in the past as well, is they, they, they get a trustee. And the trustee that is often commonly used, as you know, is Olympia Trust. Olympia Trust, they're Alberta-based, and yeah. it's quite straightforward. It's a straight fee every year. I forget the fee. It's very, it's, it's transparent. You see how much it's going to cost you. Yeah. It's self-managed. So meaning that you can, you got to put it somewhere because it is registered funds. And as, as the government knows, it is, it is untaxed dollars. So they, they count on those dollars. So you have to be put it with a, with a trustee and the trustee has regulations that they follow, but it's self-managed in this way. Once it's within the trustee, then you can invest it as you wish. Now, if you go to the bank and you say, listen, I want to do this, the bank's going to say, well, listen, you're going to get taxed heavily by removing your, your, your RSPs or RESPs from this account. Right. It's not true at all. Oh. They just don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to give up on that, on those funds. You're basically just transferring. Um, oh yeah. If you're going from one to the other, you're keeping one it in. to the other, you're keeping it in. It's, it's, so the good analogy that I like to use is, is the the R, RESP or RRSPs? It's the it's like a shoebox. The trustee is a shoebox. The banks yeah. can be the trustee, but Olympia Trust is also the the trust the trustee, and the shoes are the investment. So even though you're you're changing from um, from shoebox to shoebox, you're not getting taxed on that. They will tell you that. And for those people interested in doing this by transferring your funds from a bank or a financial advisor to a trustee to self-manage it, uh, there are no cost implications at all in doing so. But the time, it takes about three or four weeks to do so. Okay. Okay. 
once you do have it with your with the, tr the trustee, the self-directed, then you can invest it as you wish. And then you're able to invest it, lend it off to a piece of property. And you're basically lending it to a developer or a person like myself who can use it and do something with it. And it's always secure to real estate. Awesome. I'm going to go back to the fun stuff of your, sure. your thing. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so you bought this property for your daughter or it was the daughter. Yeah. I think it was daughter, right? Yes, yes. Okay. For your daughter. Um, what's the game plan here? So whenever, you know, they get to be, you know, 17 or whatever, and it's time to redeem this property or like you need the cash yep. um, is the idea to put a HELOC on it, to pull off it is the idea to sell it. What's the, the game plan? Are you going to let them move into it? Like if they're going to college somewhere close to it? And what, what's, the, what's the game plan, the, the whole thing here? So it's hard. I, I don't know the future. It's hard to, to predict if she's going to go to college or university. I think she's definitely going to pursue post-secondary education. Yeah. Uh, there's already a HELOC on it because uh, that's what savvy investors do. They want to tap into some of the equity. There's many opportunities. This is what I like about real estate. This is what I like about myself is I, I like to, to, to keep options open. The exit strategy is one is we can either sell it. Simple as that. Sell it. It pays for her education, her accommodation. And if there's enough in there, that money can actually be working to pay for the education done directly through interest rates, through a, a good interest rate. Or we can simply refinance, pull some equity out and basically pay for the, uh, the education and accommodation. There's many ways of going about it. Okay. And so say you sell this property, this property would be in either your name or your corporation's name, I'm assuming. And um, so you're going to have the tax liability for this, unless there's any intention to move it into their name when they get a little bit older or something like that, or um, are you just going to subtract that off before you give them the money or what's the plan? There? <laughs> I, so there will be taxes. It's, it's definitely, uh, yeah. I'm not an accountant. Um, yeah. So he, here's the thing is that, so I initially set it up. I put some money in to, to buy the property mm -hmm. I set it up and now after we've owned it for like 10 years now, even prior to that, uh, after the first five years or so, it was paid for, not paid for, but my, I got my money back out of it. And who's maintaining it and paying for the property and the taxes? It's the tenants. Right. And not only that, for the, the beauty, for the gift of maintaining it and, and having someone to, to, to manage the property, there's still cash flow at the, end of the, at the end of the month. Oh, that's an interesting idea. So if this is their property, do you give them the cash flow or you keep that in account? Or is that your cash flow and you, they just get the property? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think uh, my daughter has anything to complain about. She, she, I, I, she I definitely believes in the abundance. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I gave her the cash flow, and right now it's cash flowing very nicely, uh, after ten years, uh, she wouldn't know what to do with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, so if you're structuring this whole thing for them to go to school, if the idea, which you didn't even say if it was, but if the idea would be to have it paid off, would it make sense to do like say a twenty-year mortgage or something like that, a little bit more aggressive pay down, so it'd be completely paid off when they got to that point or uh, I'm, I'm just spitballing right now. Yeah. 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 I, these are, these are good questions. So, so Glenn, I, I'm not, <laughs> what I find important yeah. is cash flow. Yeah. That is the key is cash flow. You need cash flow for all these properties yep. to, to provide you funds. The idea of paying them off is uh, I believe is an archaic idea. I mean, if, if you're, if you're, it's your primary home and you wish to pay off your home, event before retirement it makes sense and if yep. it's going to help you sleep at night by all means do so but the notion of paying off investments earlier i don't see the logic in it the, because... uh, no i totally agree yeah, except yeah, yeah, yes, yes. except if you know like they're you know helps you sleep at night or something because especially in canada like 
my mortgage on this house is at 1.5 percent like can you earn better than 1.5 percent <laughs> that is it that's it that that's the logic behind it so so by by paying down your house quicker especially at 1.5 percent you're telling yourself indirectly the best i could do with my money is to make 1.5 percent and we all know that's that's just that's just silly if if even if you could really make more on your money. And, and one needs to understand that your savings or your funds or your capital, they're like soldiers. They need to go out there. And when they go out there, there's a bit of a fight, but they got to come back with a bit more. Mm -hmm. And we, we both, uh, you know, you mentioned Durham REI, like yeah. we both have been there a few times. Um, and Quentin, I think his post last week was that inflation is now at 4.2 in Ontario. So <laughs> you want to ideally be doing better than that. <laughs> precisely, precisely. Yeah. What, what a lot of people overlook when they look at their financial statements is uh, they say, oh, great, I made 6% or I made 12%. One year, I made 7% another year. It has to be consistent. And look at, look at the average. When you do look at the average, then take off easily 3% for inflation. So if you're making, I don't know, what's the average now? 7% or so? What's the average on mutual funds? I don't know. So sure. Um, the average of five years or so, 7%. So 7%, you remove 3% off the bat right there. So then you're at four. Then you got to look at the MERs, the rates, the fees, which they don't really tell you about. So that's that's the average. I mean, if it's an index fund, you, maybe it's 1.5 or so, but typically it's around, around the 2%. So you're at four, boom, you take off another two, you're at 2%. Your money is making 2% per year. That's just pitiful. Yeah. Where I was going when I was asking you about changing the terms and stuff is, yep. is there any differences that you consider because you're using this as your child's thing? Any difference than a duplex that you bought, say, across the road for your own portfolio? Is there anything that you would look at any different or no. change anything? No. No, I legalize it. That's about it. Fortunately, I do drive by because it does. It's, it's very close to where we live. And yeah, I do drive by. And I, I mentioned it to her. You know, this is this is this is your house, and she's like, I don't want to leave. Like, <laughs> she's you know, when she was six, seven, she's like, I don't want to leave. What are you talking about? I don't want to leave. Like, well, I'll give it some time. You know, eventually, <laughs> you know, maybe it's not it's not cool to live with your parents after a while. She the whole notion. But you know, at, at nine, she's nine now. She's beautiful. It's great. We're, we're, we're the kings like we're the you know we're the we're the uh <laughs> she she looks up to us and all that so so it's it's very beautiful age and um i don't really mention that but uh she she does just just to go back to the idea of uh of real estate yep. she she's embedded in this from early on that uh when she was a child you know a little baby like two three years old i'd bring her to see houses and she got the habit of doing so, of going into houses so often that when she started <laughs> trick or treating, <laughs> she, she she'd ring the doorbell and she'd want to walk into the house. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Kind of, she caught on very quickly about trick or treating. But oh yeah, beginning, she wanted to come in every house because that's what she was used to. And when we didn't, she didn't understand like what's going on. Why why aren't we walking in? We check another place. <laughs> so I'm just thinking about this, right? And so. When you bought this thing, you, you lived in it, right? So yes. you basically did a house hack. You probably could have got 5% down to do this because where my mind is going is yep. for a lot of people, they're going to say, I can't do this, if, especially if they don't own any real estate. I can't do this because it's going to be so expensive off the start. Whereas compared to an RSP, I only have to kick in the two grand a year, right? And small little payments or whatever the amount was, right? Um, so is that how, you, am I right in guessing that, that you could it, do this with possible. 5%? Yeah, definitely, definitely possible. When I first started off, um, I was considered self-employed, which, which for banks, that's like basically Death. next to criminal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Self-employed <laughs> criminal, it's very close. Yeah. So I wasn't getting anything. Uh, I'd be, I'd be begging for money. And that particular situation, eventually, it, I think it was BDC that said, we've got some funds. I bought a building with, with BDC and, uh, Maybe it was the year. Maybe it was just the fact that they're looking at my statements. They're like, We're, we want to give you some money. And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and I used that to, to buy it. But technically, you can buy, if you're going to live in it, you can buy something for 5% uh, down and get CMHC. 
it is you're sure you're paying a premium uh but uh, if if you're looking to get into the game of it it's one way of going through it because once you once you get into the game of real estate then then time is typically on your side if you were going to do this all again would there be any changes would you try to put your child on title right from the start would there be anything that you would have done differently Actually, I would put her on, on title. I think that there's there's benefits to that. Yeah. Because she'd be in a nice low tax bracket, right? You know, precisely, precisely. For years. Right? No yes. income at all. Yeah. Because my notion was to keep on growing um, <laughs> and I've, I've got things under corporations, yep. it hasn't been a huge uh, implication at the moment. But once again, I'm not I'm not selling most of my portfolio. I sold a couple of properties here and there, but overall, it's 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 the strategy is to buy and hold. There, and, there, and she's only nine. There's tons of opportunities since from nine to eighteen where she could probably be on title. And and once she gets more, I'm hoping that you know, from what she sees with what I'm doing, she's going to be somewhat actively more interested in what she's doing. Maybe it's possible. Then I could put her on title. But there's there's tons of opportunities. I know with my own mother, uh, uh, I had the. I mean, she was. It was right after my father passed away. I, I was asked by the lawyer if I wanted to be on title, and she had, she had owned the house for like thirty years. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's there's. I'm not too sure the implications on that, but yeah. I'm, I'm, Renee, awesome chat. If people wanted to get a hold of you to talk about your business or buying houses for your kids or anything else? How do they track you down? Just type in my name, Renee Mass. Uh, With me on the end. Me on the end. <laughs> everything comes up. And uh, just reach out to me on Facebook. I, I, I'm very personable. And yeah. uh, I, like, I like talking to people and helping them out and see how we can, uh, we can work together on, on reaching people's goals. Great. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Glenn. Thanks for coming on the show, Renee. I really appreciate it.